All right, we're at section 20.2, molar specific heat of an ideal gas. I'm going to dismiss the uh, uh, my image so it doesn't interfere with the uh, the screen. And now uh, we we show a a graph here of um, uh, two different isotherms. Uh, one is T. The bottom one is T. This lower one is T. This is T plus delta T. So it's a uh, a raise in temperature. And we can see that we have th uh, three processes here, I to F, I to F prime, and I to F double prime. Now, the uh, because the, the temperature increase is the same in each one of them, the internal energy is, is equal. Uh, however, if, if we look at the, uh, the work done, remember the work is the area under the curve. Well, in this curve, I to F, we have a very narrow uh, uh, area under this curve. Uh, here we have uh, from I to F prime, we have a, a broader area under the curve, not as high. And here uh, we have a, a very broad, though uh, low uh, area under the curve. So we have, uh, uh, even though the, the change in temperature is the same for each process and the internal energy is the same, uh, we, we see that the work done depends on the path that we take. Um, so to account for this, we define the molar specific heats associated with these processes. And, and um, we have a, um, uh, well, let's, let's look at the, uh, the text first for the constant volume path, all the energy input goes into increasing the internal energy of the gas because no work is done. If, um, if you remember the work is minus P delta V, well, if the delta V is zero, then work is zero. So there's no work is done. Uh, now along the constant pressure path, part of the energy transferred in by heat is transferred out by work. Uh, because you see the pressure re uh, along I uh, F prime, the pressure remains constant, but the volume uh, changes. So there is work done. So we have two different uh, uh, molar specific heats. We have the molar specific heat at a constant volume, this uh, CV, uh, Q is equal to N CV um, delta T, where N of course is the uh, number of moles uh, that's a constant volume and Q equals N CP delta T is constant pressure. So the uh, CV T describes this path and uh, CP delta T uh, describes this path. Um, so when, when we're looking at just the, um, the uh, constant volume, since no work is done, Q is equal to the change in antenna uh, internal energy and uh, the, so that we can equate these two since Q is equal to Delta E internal, um, we can put that uh, uh, in place of the Q Delta, the change in internal energy is equal to N CV, CV Delta T where CV is that molar specific heat at a constant volume. Um, let's, uh, see where I'm at here. Okay, for the, for the constant volume, uh, okay, okay, this is just showing that those, uh, those paths again, um, and the change in internal energy is equal to NC uh, V delta T. The, uh, so CV, if, CV, if, if we solve for, um, if we solve for CV, we can see that the um, CV is equal to one over N delta E internal divided by delta T, which we can make that infinitesimal uh, one over N DE, DE internal DT. Um, the, so the internal energy is the total uh, translational kinetic energy, which is equal to uh, three halves NKBT, which is equal to three halves NRT, uh, where R is the, uh, uh, KB is the Boltzmann's constant, uh, a constant, um, and uh, N is the number of molecules. And on the 
right side, three halves NRT, N is the number of moles and R is the, uh, the uh, gas constant. Um, so um, we see that CV, if we, if we use this uh, and substitute back into the CV equals one half uh, N D E uh, D T. If we put this, uh, the E N T, if we take this three halves N R T and put it into this here, uh, we'll see that the, um, the, the T's cancel, the N's cancel, and we're left with CV equals to three halves R, which is 12.5 joules per mole uh, per degree Kelvin. Uh, and here are some, here's some uh, uh, CVs. You, you can see that for a monatomic gas, the, uh, they're all about this 12.5. You know, helium is 12.5, uh, uh, argon 12.5, neon 12.7, uh, Krypton is 12.3. Now the variations come because these aren't real. Um, the idealization breaks down uh, somewhat, but they're they're close. Now let's uh, uh, when we do when we're looking at a uh, uh, constant uh, constant pressure, uh, the change in internal energy is equal to the the heat plus work. So the uh, Q is equal to the NCP delta T plus the, uh, the work minus P delta V. And uh, P delta V is equal to NR delta T. So if we substitute, substitute that in, we see that uh, uh, NCV delta T is equal to NCP, um, this is the constant volume side, the change in internal energy, that's equal to uh, NCP delta T minus uh, NR delta T. Well, we see that the N's cancel out and the delta T's cancel out. So we have uh, CP minus CV is equal to uh, R, okay? And so CP minus CV is equal to R. Uh, CP is equal to uh, five, uh, five halves R. We get, where do we get that? We, Get that from this, uh, the three halves of CV is equal to three halves R. So if, if we put uh, three halves R uh, for the CV, we'll get that uh, CP is equal to uh, five halves uh, R. And that's equal to 20.8 joules per mole per degree Kelvin. And we can see that here um, for the monotonic uh, gases, they're all 20.8 for the helium, argon, neon, uh, and, and uh, the, the krypton. And uh, so let's, uh, then, then there's also the ratio, the ratio gamma of CP over CV. Well, if CP is five halves uh, R and CV is three halves R, that's equal to five thirds and it's equal to 1.67. And you can see the, the gamma is, is the same for each of these. And we can see that the, these change when you start getting to more complicated gases, diatomic gases and polyatomic ga gases. Um, so the, uh, uh, we'll get, to, we'll get to, to that when we talk about the equipartition of energy in 20.3. Okay, let's, um, let's, Look here, how does the internal energy of an ideal gas change as it follows path? Um, let's see, I lost my place. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, how does the internal energy of an ideal gas change as it follows path I to F in the figure? Um, well, the, the uh, I to F, there's no, there's no, um, there's no delta V, so no work is done, but the uh, in, internal energy increases. Okay, there we go. Uh, and now let's look, how does the internal energy of an ideal gas change as it follows F to F prime? Well, let's follow F to F prime. F to F prime, oh, that's an isotherm. So there's no, there's no change in temperature. It's T, it's T plus delta T here and it's T plus delta T here. So if there's no change in temperature, 
and the internal energy is related to the, the temperature, then it stays the same. And sure enough, there is uh, C, the internal energy stays the same. And that's the end of section 20.2. We'll go on with 20.3 um, uh, in the next section. I mean, we'll, uh, in the next lecture.